Hello, I'm Kieran Lynch, and welcome to Overcast, the Chocolate Sheep Podcast. Each episode, we bring you latest insights, advice, and technical updates for the sheep industry. With Clover more in focus than ever, we're joined in this week's episode by Dr. Mary McAvoy from General Ireland to discuss it in more detail. Mary talks to us about the different establishment methods from a full reseed to over sowing. We discuss field selection, sowing rate, and a number of other key factors that will influence its success. Mary takes us through the pre and post sowing management to ensure good establishment. And in the latter half of the podcast, we discuss the potential of red clover in sheep systems, with Mary outlining the advances that have been made in breeding to improve the varieties that are available. We start off, however, with Mary outlining the role of clover and swords and its potential benefits. White clover and, and clover in general is hugely important in terms of where we are um, when we look at the price of fertilizer, um, when we look at the, the value of white clover in terms of what it can bring to improving sword performance, improving animal performance, reducing our dependency on bought in fertilizer. Um, white clover has the potential here on to fix to 150 uh, kilos of nitrogen per hectare per year. So it's hugely valuable, and especially in a dry stock system, when we look at the rate of costs that are increasing out on farm at the moment. Um, in addition to that, I suppose, you know, we also see that animal performance is improved when we include white clover in a sward with a perennial ryegrass. So, you know, there's there's numerous benefits to be gained um, from a from a financial perspective, from an animal performance perspective, um, and also from an environmental perspective, and to, to reduce our dependency on bought in fertilizer. Look, it is a bit of a no-brainer in some ways. It's taking them three main boxes of animal, financial, and environmental performance. Mary, this is the time of year we need to focus on it, um, particularly if anyone's considering oversowing. Look, I suppose typically clover goes into most uh, swords and sheep farms in the full reseed. Oversowing is an option, but it needs to be done correctly to work. Why is it important we consider that in the coming weeks? Yeah, so it, it, I suppose we need to be very clear that by far and wide, the easiest way to get white clover established is as, full of, as part of a full receipt. Um, and it'll always be easier and much more reliable to get white clover established when you're doing it through a full receipt where you've sprayed off and tilled the ground and you're putting it into, 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 into soil. Um, the other option, obviously, then, is to do it as part of an over situation. And that is a little bit more challenging um, at the best of times and probably a little bit more challenging. And again, when we talk about sheep swords um, and then swords in particular. So it is just something that, that we need to, to need to bear in mind. Timing is absolutely crucial. Um, we would say, you know, late April into early May is, is an ideal time for trying to over clover. You want to be doing it at a time when you have moisture um, in the forecast, when, you know, you don't want to be doing it in midsummer, maybe when you're prone to drying up on your farm, um, as that will really hamper the, the chances of clover, which is which is over because it is trying to compete with the established grass, which has a well-developed root. Um, soil fertility is hugely important. You need to be putting it into, you know, good fertile soils. PH of you know six point three or above, and P and K index uh, at P and K at, at index three. White clover, it's probably fussier than um, than a perennial ryegrass uh, as such. It really does need that good soil fertility, um, and there's no point in putting it into soils which have low pH or low in P, P and K because it'll just really struggle to get established, and especially when you're over sown and it's trying to compete with with um, an existing sward. So. Soil fertility is crucially important and your timing is crucially important. And I suppose, look, I mean, we've had a cold spring this year so far, Kieran. Um, you know, April is particularly cold um, and dry as well in a lot of parts. Um, hopefully now the temperatures are going to start to increase now or into the start of May. Um, so, so now should be a good time to, to over sow clover, assuming that the moisture um, com- comes to some degree for the next couple of weeks. So that will be important. When you're picking your fields for over sowing your clover, a couple of things to bear in mind. You want to make sure you're putting it into clean, clean fields where you don't have a weed burden. Um, if you have problematic fields, you know, where you have a lot of weeds, uh, control your weeds this year and then consider over sowing your clover next year. Don't think you're going to control your weeds this year and get your clover in later on in the year. A lot of um, those sprays that you will use or the herbicides that you will use that will take out your, your thistles or your docks um, or nettles or anything like that. A lot of them will have a residual effect or a carryover effect on clover. So we would say control weeds this year, over sow next year. OK, so only really target your clean fields there for over this year. And I suppose the other thing to do to bear in mind is um, not to do too much at any one point in time. So what we would advise is maybe 10 to 15 percent of the farm tops if it's your first time uh, trying to over sow clover. And um, because if you do too much, it will be just too difficult to manage it. Um, and, you know, it'll be hard to, to keep the clover in the sward. So obviously, Mary, site selection is going to have a huge impact on how successful it's going to be. So the soil fertility, the weed control. So in many cases, like you could be preparing this year to embark on getting clover into your swords next year. 
Absolutely, Kiran, yeah. How important, Mary, like we talked there a little bit about that field selection. The method of how we put this in. So I suppose a lot would have tried it previously, just broadcast over Sonnet and maybe with very limited success. You would be more encouraging more mechanical intervention when you're trying to over sew that into a sword. Yeah, so broadcasting can work quite well where you're putting it into open swords, you know, where you're seeing plenty of, you have plenty of soil visibility, where you've, you know, good open swords when you look down into the ground after an animal, after it's being grazed, where you, where you can visually see soil. Um, outside that, if you're putting it into swords that maybe are, are a little bit more dense, as you often will have on, on dry stock farms, um, you know, the swords are that little bit thicker. And you have to bear in mind, you're putting a tiny little seed in and that seed is trying to compete with um, an established, aggressively growing uh, perennial ryegrass forage. So um, definitely soil seed contacts is absolutely crucial. Um, and therefore, I suppose the mechanical, um, you know, putting it in with something like um, a guttler or earth, earth seed or something, maybe that'll, something with you, even with some tine har harrows that'll help open up the sword and rip up or rip out some of the old or that, the dead sword there and um, before you start it'll just make uh, it'll improve your chances of better soil seed contact so if you like definitely um for dry stock farms and for those swords which are a little bit denser um you know sown it with with something like a guttler or a seed or something along the lines of that will improve your chances of success so that soil contact is essential as well look in terms of preparation for that Obviously, there will be some silage being cut in the next couple of weeks. Some of them far fields may be selected generally are more weed free. In a grazing situation, Mary, I assume it has to be grazed out very tight before you embark on this. Yeah, so we'd always advise, I suppose, yeah, you, you you skin the field as tight as you possibly can before you try over. So, so I mean, a few things are crucial. Like you want to have, um, you know, the light is absolutely crucial for for the white clover seed as it's uh, once it's once it germinates so um you have to have soil seed contact if it doesn't have soil seed contact it can still germinate so if it's sitting on top of a grass leaf it'll still germinate um but if it does if it isn't touching soil that root won't have a ch chance to 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 to, to to get established so it, it'll just shrivel up and die so soil seed contact is absolutely crucial um, and uh, you know light is absolutely crucial for the plant once it does germinate so you know grazing out tight um, removing as much of the old sword I suppose as we can um, and allowing light down to the base of the sword is absolutely crucial for, for the white clover as it starts to germinate and I suppose you know I've said it there already but you know you just need to bear in mind it is a tiny little seed um, that is trying to get going in an established sword so you have to give it every chance of success. Mary, what kind of seeding rate are we looking at for oversowing? <clears throat> so look for, for there's I suppose there's two options with oversowing here on you can you oversow with either coated clover um, or you can oversow with naked naked white clover. Um, and I what I would say is, you know, in, as part of a full recede, you know, we should be putting out probably a kilo and a half to two kilos to the acre when we're doing a full recede. When we're over sown clover, you're not going to get a 100% strike rate of all the clover seeds you put out. So I would be almost doubling that, bringing it up to three or four kilos to the acre uh, when we're over sown, just to give it every chance of success and to make sure we're putting out enough plants um, or enough seeds there day one to make sure we have enough plants in the in, in the established sort thereafter. Yeah, just when we're talking about establishment, when we get into the ground, we're going at that higher rate for mm -hmm. over sown. Is rolling an advantage post sown to get, ensure that soil seed contact? So look, it, it, it's not always it's not always necessary, but it might help again if you're putting it in slightly denser swords. But like you need to, you know, if you if you use you know a machine like the Guttler or the Earth Seed or something like that, and, and maybe sow it into the ground, like and and it is important to sow it shallow as well because it is such a small seed. You don't want to be putting it down. You just want to be barely getting soil seed contact. And um, some of those machines will have a, a light roller on the back, um, and and they tend to work fine. There shouldn't be any great need to roll with a heavy with a heavy roller thereafter. Okay. Look, post sown management, that's going to have an impact on as well. Mary, just from a grazing point of view or a fertilizer point of view in that first year, what can be done to improve the chances of that clover take? So look, after sowing, yeah, it's absolutely crucial. So I suppose there's a few things to bear in mind. Like we need to keep remembering that we need to get light down to the base. The clover is going to be, you know, the, the, the grass is going to be growing relatively um 
relatively well or relatively aggressively and we need to graze it frequently and bring it down to you know low covers just to allow light down to the clover at all times so you know you're not going to go into any any big covers you're not going to you know once you sow your clover you're going to be grazing it frequently you're going to be going in on a shorter rotation than, than you normally would um graze it often and, and, and graze it well down just to make sure you're getting light down to the clover um, you don't want any shading or shadowing out from the from the grass so you don't want any kind of cover of grass building up so that's that's really important um so so I'd be saying kind of go in at covers of maybe 800 kilos uh, to 1,000 kilos for the first maybe two grazings um, and don't go anything above, you know, 1,100 as your pre-grazing herbage, herbage yield for the subsequent couple of grazings. So great graze low, frequently at low covers, allow light down to the base of the sward. And I suppose in terms of your your nutrients that you're applying, um, your P's and K's are going to be important. Um, if you're already at index three, you're not in a bad position, I suppose. But if you're anywhere below that, you do need to make sure you're feeding it out of a P and K. Um, but bear in mind, we have said already that we would be advising you put it into those soils which are at, are, are already at index three uh, to give the clover every chance of, of, of getting up and get, getting going. And the more you can reduce nitrogen or cut nitrogen out, um, the better. So um, whether you go at half the rate you normally go at, or if you can cut out nitrogen entirely for, for a round or two after you sow it um, just to, what you're trying to do essentially is check the grass uh, to slow the growth of the grass down to give clover as much of a chance as you possibly can to, to, to keep it going um, and I suppose thereafter then you know go out at a half rate go at a low rate of nitrogen um, you know just to just to not the more the more nitrogen you go out with the less the less the clover will do for you and the more, more the grass will grow so the less nitrogen you can go with you know, the better your chance you give the clover of, uh, of getting of getting established in the first year. You have to kind of adopt that mindset as competing against the grass really in that first year. Just from a fixation point of view, it's going to take a little bit of time before that clover really kicks in. Yeah, so look, I mean, I suppose the, the clover, like clover start fixing nitrogen for itself relatively soon after after you sow it. So the problem is, I suppose, it doesn't really re release a huge amount of nitrogen to, to, to its companion plants or to the grass plant. Uh, for maybe six or eight months after you sow it. So um, it will start to fix its, it, itself quite soon after you sow it um, and it'll start to provide it, itself with nitrogen that it needs to, 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 to grow. Um, but as I say, it'll be a little bit longer before it feeds that back into the grass. But at the same time, you know, you know you, we're only talking about doing a small proportion of the farm uh, with over sown at any one time and we need to give it every chance of, of success. So the more we can reduce the nitrogen, the better chance we, we, we help the clover. It's one of them investments that's going to pay back if you get done right. Look, I'm, I'm not going to switch topic, but I'm going to switch clover slightly with you. Um, red clover, it's something that's come back into focus. It's not new, it's been around for a long time, but it's possibly something we've ignored slightly. Mm. Mary, its role in grazing systems for sheep or in silage systems in particular Red clover, I think it's a it's a hugely um, valuable plant, and again, it can fix. You know, red clover can fix up to two hundred and fifty kilos of nitrogen, so it's greater potential even than white clover to fix nitrogen. And you know, we're seeing from a lot of work that's ongoing, um, both in Chagos, coming from UCD as well, and coming from other um, re research sites around the country and abroad. You know, where we include red clover or or white clover, as for that matter. Um, with perennial ryegrass, we're seeing improvements in animal performance. So, you know, it, it, there, there are huge benefits to, to the red clover. We also know that with red clover, you know, red clover with that potential fixed nitrogen at, you know, 250 kilos of nitrogen per hectare per year really suits a silage system, okay? And I suppose part of that is how the plant grows. So it has a different growth habit to white clover. White clover will grow in by spreading stolons along the top of the ground, red clover grows as an individual plants. So with an individual with an individual plant, um, as the year progresses, the crown of that plant, which is the growing point of that plant, moves slightly up or gets slightly higher up in the sward. Um, and the risk with red clover, if you're grazing it, is if you graze below that crown, you'll actually kill off the plant. And that's why it suits silage a little bit more. Or I suppose why the varieties we have to date suit silage cutting a little bit more because, because you can cut it a little bit higher. You're not grazing, cutting it quite as tight as you, as you would be grazing it. So you're not cutting below that crown. So you can help with the persistency of red clover. And I suppose realistically what we're seeing is red clover is probably lasting um, maybe three to four years in, a, in an intensive silage system where you're maybe taking three to four cuts of it across the year. Um, and it is important to bear in mind, you know, that you have to treat it a little bit different maybe to how you're, treating your standard um, perennial ryegrass silage swords on the farm. Um, that three to four cut silage does suit the red clover. Ideally, you'll be taking your first cut kind of middle to, to, to the end of May. You'll be getting a second cut 
um, six or seven weeks later. And if you want a third and fourth cut, you'll be able to take it. Um, otherwise, you know, you can potentially put bring that back into into grazing into grazing ground and just don't graze it maybe as, as tight as you might be grazing your perennial rye grasses, as in don't skin the field, graze to five or six centimetres, no tighter than that. Really is an old post weaning for lambs after that silage cuts. Look, from a breeding point of view, a lot has changed with it as well. The persistency is improving. Oestrogen would have been a concern. I know that's something they're trying to reduce in as well. It has come on a lot though in the last number of years. Yeah, look, I mean, there, there has been um, anecdotally or historically in it, uh, issues with um, red clover and the phytoestrogen east, phyto content, and especially for breeding breeding um, yos. So six weeks either side of token, we'd always advise you take breeding stock um, off your red clover swords and breeding ram lambs should never actually really be grazing red clover swords. Um, if they're being used for breeding. Um, but yeah, look, there's a lot ongoing um, in terms of uh, plant breeding with your red clovers. So they are looking at reducing the phytoestrogen content. So, you know, to, to reduce the effect or the potential effect on fertility in sheep. Um, also looking at increasing the, the PPO or the polyphenol oxidase content of the red clover to improve um, the availability um, of, of protein um, in the rumen and slow down that breakdown of protein so the animal gets more use out of the protein coming from the red clover um, and also the breeders are obviously looking at the persistency of red clover which you know historically has been a weakness of the plant I suppose if it's only lasting for three years in a, in a, in a silage cutting system and it's not really lasting too well under brazing either like again you're probably talking about max of three years under under brazing um, but they're also looking at improving the persistency and improving the tolerance of red clover to tolerate grazing or to tolerate a little bit tighter cutting so it'll last for longer out on farm because it is a plant which has huge potential um, to reduce our, our use of nitrogen and also improve animal performance and we're seeing really good animal performance related studies coming from 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 red clover be it, be it from silage or be it from um, be it from grazing grazing red clover swords definitely something to consider as well it's changing so it is look a lot of this is going to become more common on farms over the coming years and hopefully we can start seeing some of the benefits. Of Mary, great getting that update for you today. Really appreciate your time. Thanks very much, Kieran. Appreciate it. Okay, we're going to leave it there for this episode. Again, it's something that's going to become more and more common on farms in the coming years and something we're going to be discussing certainly in a bit more detail on this podcast and various other places. I'd like to thank Mary again for giving up our time to be with us. It was very informative, very useful and timely at the moment. I have included a link in the description to a booklet released by Chagas last year on a guide to establishing and managing white clover and swords that will be used for reference for anyone who wants to have a look at it. That's it for me for this episode. Again, for any updates from our sheep programme, keep an eye on our Twitter page at Chagas Sheep. I'm Kieran Lynch. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe and listen in to any of our episodes.